So guys, episode 10 of A Legend of Korra. Two more episodes to go for the for book one to f end, and that's next week. Uh, but this week was an, another good episode, solid episode once again, um, entitled Turning the Tides. Uh, this episode was really, really, like literally the title means it all. Um, and I'm just here to give my thoughts on it. Basically, Cora's recuperating from being abducted and everything like that, and she recounts her story. That was fine. Um, but we really started to see a lot of things start to f come to fruition, guys. Like, for example, As uh, Asami, you know, basically confronting Mako about, you know, his feelings for Cora. You know, things like that. Uh, Amon basically setting his plans into motion, uh, taking out the rest of the council and things like that. I mean, they went right after a lot of them. Uh, and then they went after Tenzin. And luckily, Tenzin was able to escape. You know, he... Once again, Tenzin... Anytime Tenzin shows off his airbending skills, it's like... It's, it's magic to me. Um... The Equalists are... No, they're, they're, they're not playing now. They, they're, they're going for broke guys and uh it was it was just like really heartbreaking to see some of the stuff that was going on you know um you know the police they can't even really deal with it they getting captured by you know um uh, asami's father you know and things like that you see her, asami's father up there saying like he still can't believe that his daughter is with those benders as he said you know you heard the disdain like of it was like it was crazy uh but more importantly you know you, you just see Cora and the gang just trying to do whatever they do what they can to keep people safe you know very much um and then it comes to the fact that you know Tenzin actually acts as uh Beifong to to stay with his family to protect them you know, because his his wife was having labor pains and, you know, she, she was about to go into labor, which was um, really interesting. Uh, Pema, she goes into labor. So I thought that that was kind of cool as well. Um, so Tenzin's about to enter, have another child enter the world. But in fact, really, this is not the world you want to be entering a child in. But, you know. It still was, and it became so bad that the Eucalyptus attacked the air temple, you know, Tenzin's home. They went right to the island, and he started an attack, and, you know, they're doing the best they can, you know, and then that's where you see, you know, uh, Beifong spring into action, and she's taking out the Eucalyptus, and then there's, the I guess, the right-hand man to Amon. I just want this guy to go away now. He was annoying. He's just really annoying to me now. It's, it's like... To the, I'm like, okay, I know every villain has to have, a, like, a lieutenant or so, but this guy is just really annoying to me. Um, but was the real joy of that was the fact when the kids came in to help Beifong, which was really good. I mean, they are airbenders, so you see them actually airbending, you know. I love that she's like, get away from my dad's old girlfriend. It was kind of funny. I thought that was funny. And then you see the uh, forgetting the um, Tenzin's son's name. He he's farting and airbending at the same time. <laughs> that was funny. I was like, look at this. Um, but the kids did very good. I I will say that. And then when Tenzin got there, you know that was fun. He's like, you let them fight, and he's like, no, they you taught them well, you know. And that's when uh, Pema she went to labor. Before that, she went to labor. She had the baby. Um, so Tenzin has another son. And uh, that's when basically it was a touching moment right there. But still, the, you can't have it be too touching because, first of all, they they got to get off the island. And that's where basically we saw, you know, everybody, you know, Tenzin was like, Cora, we got to go. We, you know, Cora, you know, she's very headstrong and very, you know, she wants to stay. You know, but sometimes even the best have to make a tactical retreat. Art of War, Sun Tzu even wrote that. Um, you know, and when we saw that, you know, you see everybody leaving, you know, 
and they started going after Tenzin. Uh, so Beifong actually bought them some time, and she, you knew something was bad because the way she looked at them was like, she's either gonna sacrifice herself to let them get away, or some something else is gonna happen. Um, and we saw that she she bought them some time to get away, and the equalist caught her. And I love the the line from Tenzin's son. I'm forgetting his son's name. That lady is my hero. And she, he's like, yes, yes, she is. And that's what we saw at the end. Um, that was really kind of sad to see, you know, Beifong lose her bending like that, you know, from Amon. And then it's the question of who is this guy? You know, who is he? How is he able to do this? There's got to be some, they got to explain that. Because what I'm hearing is that he's only supposed to be in this season. That's it. He's not going to be throughout the next season. So um, it, it's got to be explained to how he's able to take away somebody's bending. And I mean, I thought Aang was the only one that could do that. Uh, and if, if they pull that crap and that it's actually Aang, I'm going to be pissed. I hope that's not what it is. But um, he takes away Bang Beifong's uh, bending. I mean, she, she knew it was coming, but it still was a very touching moment. You know, for somebody like me who's very emotional and seeing that, you know, you grow on the characters like that. You know, that was very emotional to see her. You know, she she given up. You know, she's basically saying, yeah, this is it. And she she pretty much, you know, gave up her bending, you know, just to protect her former lover, you know, in a way. You know, that's basically what it was. That's what it came down to. So it all comes down to the next one hour season finale next week. Um, and should be really good. I mean, the the next the ex next week episode eleven and twelve. Episode eleven is called Skeletons in a Closet, and twelve is called Endgame. And they've used that title like thousands of times as like, Endgame. But uh, yeah, and then of course, uh, book two will consist of fourteen episodes. Um. But they've done a magnificent job with this series. I I'm, I got employed uh, Joaquim Doss and Sato and uh, Ki Hayu Rayu and all of them, all the people over that has been on this series. You got to give them credit, you know, because usually direct sequels to hit shows don't always work. And Korra was a hit. Is is it's, it's been a hit, and I loved every every episode, every all nine episodes 10 episodes previous so it's been great um very good um but this was once again a, a fantastic episode once again guys and you know i just like to always, always get your comments and your input on what you thought about this episode as a whole and as, as well as you know how do you feel about you know tenzin bringing another child uh the question is now will this be a, a airbender or not uh and also, you know, how does this, how do you feel about Beifong losing her bending abilities? You know, it's like, you know, but then of course, you know, uh, we saw also, which I, I wasn't going to spoil, but, you know, we saw um, General Iroh coming, coming uh, with his, his uh, fleet of warships, you know, to help. And the, the thing about it was uh, uh, Dante uh, Brasco actually uh, voiced, voiced the character, the same actor who voiced Zuko so it makes you wonder is Iroh actually related to Zuko or so um but other than that just a fantastic episode guy and other than that guys that was it for the animated stuff for this weekend uh you guys tell me what you think and um y'all take care okay